Welcome to Pure Math 030. This is a lesson on transformations, but specifically on transforming the graphs. So, graphs of transformed functions. And this is sort of a test related section. You'll see lots of exam questions that are based on this sort of thing. The workbook is filled with these questions as well. So, they're very good practice. And I'll start right in on it. This is an unknown function, y equal f at x below, and we want to sketch a variety of functions, uh, transformed functions, based on this original graph. Now, unlike earlier where we had equations, here we have to work strictly on the rules of transformed functions. You cannot put these into your calculator. So the first one is 2y is equal to f at x. So in other words, y has been replaced with 2y in the equation. Now most of you, to identify the transformation in this, for this graph, most of you would prefer to isolate the y. And if you did that, I'm not going to show it. Well, I guess I can. If you divided by 2, you'd get y is equal to 1 half f at x. And from that, or from the original, you should be able to recognize that there is a vertical stretch by a factor of one-half about the x-axis. Now this means that every y-coordinate on the original curve will undergo a transformation by being multiplied by one-half. So every y-coordinate is multiplied by one-half. So we return to the graph and we apply that. Now you can do it point by point or you can do it by um, just getting the shape down. Either way it would be fine. In this case, because it's a simple one, you don't have to uh, worry too much. Now the x-intercepts stay the same because a point where y is equal to zero is unaffected by that transformation. But this x-intercept of 4, or excuse me, y-intercept of 4, 0, 4 is going to transform into 0, 2. And all I have to do now is connect those x-intercepts from before to our new y-intercept. So the equation I've got drawn is y is equal to one-half f at x. And this new point is 0, comma 2. I'll make a few other observations. The x-intercepts are invariant. Recall that word. They're unchanged under the transformations. And the other observation is that the point 0, comma 4 transformed into 0, comma 2. So the y coordinate multiplied by 2. Let's look at the next one. y is equal to f and negative x plus 2. Here too, you want to do some work on that equation. You will recall that you must factor out the negative from that expression, from the x, so it becomes f at negative x minus 2 in brackets. And we have two transformations. We have a reflection in the y-axis, courtesy of that negative. And also note that x has been replaced with negative x. And then also there's a horizontal translation of two units to the right. So we go back to the graph and we apply these transformations with care. Now interestingly, when we reflect in the y-axis, 
nothing happens. This is already symmetric about the y-axis, so the reflection doesn't affect it. So the reflection, I'll note that the reflection does not affect the graph. Of course, that's not always the case, but in this, this particular case it was. So really all we're concerned with is that horizontal translation of 2 to the right. So we just pick up every point and we move it 2 over to the right. And then redraw. And that becomes y is equal to f at negative x minus 2. Now this ordered pair, I'll only indicate this one, is x is 2 and y is 4. So again, the y-coordinate unchanged when you do a horizontal transformation. Only the x is affected. Now this one has nice straight lines. It always gets trickier if you have a curved section. So the next one is going to have um, extra graph. The next one has a shape like this. And we're going to do a few transformations on it. So you can sort of get by with these simply by roughing them in or by tracking individual points. I'd mentioned that before. And the more curvy or complicated the graph, the more you have to rely on going point to point. So I'll bring up the question on this. The first one is negative y over 2 is equal to f at x. As always, you'll want to do the manipulation on it. So y is equal to negative 2 f at x. That tells us we have a reflection in the x-axis. That's what the negative does. And we also have a vertical stretch by a factor of 2 about the x-axis. And again, by isolating the y, we have an easier time identifying that. So here's our curve, and we want to apply those. Now, you can do two things with, the, with it. You can do it in, in a case like this. You can do it together. You can recognize that every y-coordinate is being multiplied by negative 2, or you can um, do it step by step. So I will point that out at the top that every y coordinate is multiplied by negative 2. And if you follow that instruction, you can go to your answer immediately. I'm going to do it consistent with that order of operations I established earlier. I'm going to reflect it and then stretch it. And I'm just going to rough in the first one. So if I was to reflect, the point that I'm mostly interested in dealing with is this 2 comma 4. And it's going to turn into 2 comma negative 4 down there. So this first part of the graph, following the reflection, is going to go like this, just a perfect mirror image. And then the point 6, negative 4 is going to transform into 6, 4 up there. So you get this. That is the perfect mirror image. And if you wanted to indicate it, you would call it y is equal to negative f at x. I repeat though, you may do it in one step if you're comfortable with it. Now I will multiply every y coordinate on the new graph by a factor of 2. So this point, which is 2 comma negative 4, is going to transform into 2 comma negative 8. And I like to get a few points laid out for it first. And then 6, 4 is going to change into 6, 8. 
keep in mind the x-intercepts do not change because this is only a vertical stretch and reflection so the x-coordinates will not change under this and I'm going to do a, a kind of a as good a job as possible to, to, re to draw this one but it's not easy and you're never judged on your artwork with these I will point out these coordinates so 6 comma 8 is where that point transformed to and this one is 2 comma negative 8 and that is your curve could have been done in one step if you had wanted to let's take a look at another one the same graph the same original graph actually I gave an extra blank one for us to draw it don't need it but for this one actually not the same original graph this is just a, uh, a new one trickier one this is a section of a curve and I'm giving three ordered pairs there are no X or Y intercepts and X and Y intercepts are always easier to work with because you know that only one of the coordinates is affected by it so they, they make life a little bit easier here we're gonna have to do it point by point so y is equal to f at negative one-half x so as always identify the transformations that have taken place we have a reflection in the y-axis that's the negative then we have a horizontal stretch by a factor of 2 about the y-axis so remember that when x is replaced with one-half x it's always the reciprocal so here we go now again if you identify the transformations correctly you could do this in one step just multiply the x-coordinate every x-coordinate by negative 2 I'm though going to do it in two steps I'm going to do the reflection first and when I do the reflection it's only the x coordinate that's affected this point 4 comma 8 will transform to negative 4 comma 8 on the reflected graph and then we have negative 6 comma 4 for that second point and then negative 8 comma 8 for the third point and in fact it would if you did connect the dots you'd get this and for your information that would be in red y is equal to f at negative x now I realize that's not our final answer but that takes care of the reflection I did not draw in the ordered pairs because I didn't want to get it to get too cluttered but now all we have to do is multiply the x coordinates by a factor of 2 so when I see this point here which is negative 8 comma 8 I multiplied by 2 and it turns into negative 16 comma 8 so the x coordinate gets multiplied by 2 so negative 16 comma 8 and if you check the point that it started at 8 8 all I did was multiply the X by negative 2 so had you done it in one step you would have gotten to that point now 6 comma 4 um, excuse me negative 6 comma 4 we multiply by 2 and negative 6 times 2 is negative 12 so that is negative 12 comma 4 and then finally the third point negative 4 8 times 2 is negative 8 comma 8 which is already accounted for in another one it's right there and then our curve look like that and that is our new graph y equal f at negative 1 half and what
what is interesting with this graph is if you take a look at the original, you see that the horizontal distance it covered was four units because of that that is the original. But on the stretched graph, it's eight. And that makes sense because the graph has been multiplied by a factor of two horizontally. So it should be exactly double the horizontal size. That is considered a relatively tricky graph. Now I'll bring up a new one. Let's do one more with this one. Actually, I have a couple of those. Um, didn't need them. Here, we have y minus 1 is equal to negative 2 f at x. So as before, I will isolate the y, giving me this, add 1 on. And you will always want to identify the transformations. So we do have a reflection in the x-axis. We do have a reflection, a vertical stretch by a factor of 2 about the x-axis. That's the 2. And then we have a vertical translation of 1 unit up, the 1 at the end. So in that order, I'm going to tackle the curve. So I'll bring up a new screen so we can look at this one. And you could do it in one step if you're really careful, but I'm going to be I'm going to do it in about three steps. I'm not going to label the points the whole way, but if we take these that four comma eight, and if we reflect it in the y at the x-axis, excuse me, x would be four and y would be negative eight. So we would get this point on that curve, and then six comma four is going to turn into um, 6 comma negative 4. And then y or 8 comma 8 will turn into 8 comma negative 8. So down there. We now have to take it and multiply the y coordinates by 2. Now this is going to be interesting because space wise um, I'm going to have to go off the graph a little bit I think fortunately so 4 comma negative 8 is going to turn into 4 comma negative 16 yikes down there okay 11 12 that's a little bit below and then 6 comma 4 will be 6 comma negative 4 will be 6 comma negative 8 how did I make this mistake and then 8 comma negative 8 will turn into 8 comma negative 16. And then finally take that graph and move it one unit up. So that 6 comma negative 8 is going to turn into 6 comma negative 7. And then this point is going to be a move it one up and one up is going to be four comma negative fifteen and this one's going to be eight comma negative fifteen so it's a little tight there at the bottom but hopefully you get the picture from that so all I did was reflect, stretch it vertically, and then up one. But notice the x-coordinates, nothing really happened to this thing horizontally. And that's just another look at the graph without anything being done to it. So that's the idea with these ones. They're good exam questions and they really force you to keep track of what's going on. In, in summary for it, my recommendation is to rough in the graphs as much as you can but if the graph is really complicated then do it point by point and remember you can track individual points to what they transform to on the new graph and that will guarantee that you can handle any complicated graph thank you for